Okay, so this is a video of a little app builder that I wrote um, to create Rebel apps and to show how to write Rebel code to help people get started, um, even if they've never written code before. And it's actually a functional application builder. It builds GUIs, graphic user interfaces, and it also builds uh, the code needed to write applications. So the way this works is you have a number of things you can select from up here. Uh, if we want to add a button, for example, to our application, we click on button, we type in the text that we want to be on the button. So let's type in hello world. I am on a uh, on screen keyboard here, so it's a little bit hard to type in. So that button now has the words, or displays the words on its face. Um, hello world. And with any of these GUI widgets, you can select an action. And there are a huge number of actions here that you can select from. Um, but just some, you know, these are the most commonly used functions in Rebel. And there are hundreds more. But uh, the first action in the list here is alert. That, that creates a pop-up so the user can read something that you want them to read. So we'll click on that. And um, all of these actions, or many of the actions, require a data, data source. Um, data source can be something, for example, read from a file. It can be a, a random number. It could be the current time. It could be um, some text that you type in um, literally. It could be a, you know, a value that's gotten from a number of, of other operations by um, you know, getting items from a list. You could request some text from the user um, and so forth. What we're going to do is take this value item. And what that does is it alerts the uh, user with whatever is on the, the value is whatever is on the face of the GUI widget. So in this case, we've typed in hello world. So when we click on the button, it's going to tell us hello world. And we're done adding actions now. So now when we click on the button, here's our application. It pops up a little requester saying hello world. And the most important part of this is that uh, it shows you the actual code. So what this application does is it builds um, genuinely, uh, this is real rebel code um, uh, that you can learn from. So this application contains a button with the text hello world on it and when that button is clicked it alerts a user with um, the value and that word form we put in there um, for the alert function uh, because form converts any value into text. So. Um, we don't need it in this case. In fact, if we want to edit this, we can. The value on the um, on the button is a piece of text, but we use the form function to uh, convert if it, for example, was uh, a number or an IP address or um, some other value that wasn't um, enclosed in, in quotes. Um, Rebel has all these 40 some odd data types. And uh, if we want to just convert that data type into text, we can use the word form. But um, if we edit this, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to change. We can run the application again. It's not going to change what what we what we have in the program. So what we can do is click on Save and Edit. That little area is just a display. Um, give the app a name, and it tells you you can press the F5 key or Control E to run the code in your editor. So let's do that. E here, and it runs the application right from inside the editor. Um, and if we want to actually edit the the code, we can do it right here in the editor. So we can make all sorts of changes um, directly. Here, do Control S, or you can just click on the Save button. And now that application is actually edited, and it's saved. So if we want to um, run it in our you know, in, in system, just have Rebel. Installed. There's our app. Rebel is a half a meg download, or in, in every case, less than a meg. Um, just install it, uh, run it as administrator, and you can um, you can then run any file which ends in .r. So by default, any file that um, has a file name .r, you can click on it and it will run as if it's an executable program. There's our app, and distributing that app is as easy as distributing that half meg Rebel installer and um, 
and your code file. And this code file, if we uh, look at it, it's exactly what we um, what we edited in the um, in the Rebel editor. And you can see it. It added um, this little bit um, to the uh, to the program. Um, what this does is it um, creates a window. First of all, we have the Rebel header. It creates a window. Uh, which we're going to call WIN, but we could call it whatever we wanted. And then it views that window center faced. Um, views that window, cent window center faced. Um, and what that window is going to be made up of is a layout of all that code that, that we created. So it adds that, that uh, boilerplate um, code to the program when you, when you create the program in the app builder. So that's basically how the uh, how the system works. I'm going to make a, another video here demonstrating a number of little apps that I created with this, and uh, give you an idea how to how to use the system, and give you some ideas of what you can create. But pretty simple. If you want to add a field, let's add a field here, for example. And it, it asks you the width um, for a thing like a field um, or any item that we're going to want to refer to, any GUI widget that we're going to want to refer to later. Uh, we want to give it a label um, so that we can. You know, refer to which which thing that we want to get data from uh, later on in our program. Um, by default, this is called my field one. The area by default would be called my my area one. Um, we can change that to whatever we want. If we add another field later, we can call it my field two, and so on. Um, we won't have any actions to that. Um, you can see now we've added a field. If we want another field, um, oops. and if you make a mistake, just press cancel. Um, if at any point you create uh, an error in the program that crashes the builder, it's no problem, just uh, run recover and it will run, it will open the last application. So just rerun your app builder, run the recover, click the recover button and it'll bring up your, your code where again you can save and edit any changes. Um, there's some help down at the bottom here. If you click on the functions button, what that does is it brings up a list of all of the um, functions in Rebel. So you can click on them and it'll pop up a little help. It shows you exactly how um, how you use any function. So that's the, that's the um, kind of the what we're working for here is to learn how all these functions work and how to be able to do all these different kinds of actions in Rebel. Um, there's also a console that comes up. If you click on the console button, you can type in um, some Rebel code and try things out. And if you go to rebelforum.com, you can ask questions, and uh, there are a number of tutorials linked at the top of rebel rebelforum.com. Um, and uh, there's a quick start and a bunch of uh, quick examples, and then there's an entire book, an 800 page book, that'll really explain. Uh, it's business programming.com that'll explain everything you could possibly want to know about Rebel. Um, but to get started here, just you can click on the help. Um, most of what I've demonstrated here is explained. In, in the, other general things that you need to understand. Um, and you can get started writing apps. I'll make another video here um, demonstrating maybe 10 apps or so that are created using this little builder um, and explain enough to get started uh, coding with Rebel.